I have not talked about anything paranormal here on this channel in a long time, but I'm actually writing on my paranormal blog a lot, pretty constantly. And I'm listening to paranormal podcasts all the time. That's all that I listen to, basically. So I thought I would try just like a paranormal hangout today. And I'm going to kind of talk about things I've been writing on my blog. I don't know if this is really going to work, like how it's going to feel, but I thought I would just like try this out, see how it goes. I'm really not trying to plug my blog because it's kind of just like a diary for me um, and like my worldview and like documenting how my worldview develops. So please don't feel like you have to go to it because it's like kind of, it's, it's all about like thoughts and ideas. So there's not like cool pictures or cool stories necessarily because I don't have a lot of experiences. It's just kind of like my interpretations of various phenomena that get reported. Also like my impressions of certain techniques that people use today or ways that we tend to believe without questioning it. Okay, so this first post I'm going to be referencing is called You Can See Me. What prompted this post? It was an episode of Expanded Perspectives podcast, one of my favorites, shout out. They have a YouTube channel, check out Expanded Perspectives, um, where this lady, I'm assuming it's a lady, this lady named RL, she told her story, where, long story short, RL was outside of her country home at twilight, like the sun starting to go down, you can still see, and she saw this trash bag like blow, blowing down the street really fast. And she thought nothing of it until she was like, oh, but there's no wind, so it wouldn't be blowing like this. So she watched this black trash bag and it morphed into a black cat. And then it morphed again into a one foot tall, all black man. And so RL is staring at this man and then the man sees that she can see him and he's like, <gasps> and then he just jumps into the earth. He just jumps into the ground. There's not a hole or anything there. He just jumps in and disappears. So this story is amazing and it got me thinking about a lot of different things. So the first thing it had me think about is this lore. First of all, let's assume this guy is a fae, a fae of some type. A fairy, gnome, troll, goblin, little person of some kind. Which is one of my favorite subjects, by the way. So, I have often heard of this lore that fairies live inside of the earth, or inside of stone, or, you know, in a cave. So, that really lines up with a lore that you hear around the world that perhaps inside of the ground that's his home and there seems to be this nature of like there's not necessarily a point of entry you it's just you just go into the bit into the boulder or you go into the ground and I thought that stood out in particular and again though let me state I'm aware this could be fake I'm aware this could be a tall tale, but I still like to consider every story that I hear and just ruminate on it as if it were real. What does it mean if it is real, okay? I try to keep like a healthy level of skepticism, don't get me wrong, but I also like to listen to people's stories and just believe them if only for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so the next thing that I thought about after hearing this story was the fact that this little charcoal man was surprised that he was being seen. He was like, oh, you can see me? You know, um, what does this mean? This is not the first story like this where a little fairy is shocked that a human can see them. I have heard stories like that over the years. It makes me think like, okay, so maybe these fairies, they can see us all the time. Like they know, oh, there's a human over there, but the human can't see me. Are they just around us all the time and fully aware of us? The other thing I'm thinking is like, what creates the conditions 
where a person can see a fairy. What were the factors that enabled RL to see this fairy? Assuming it's a fairy. Did the fairy man let his guard down? Did the fairy man run out of MP? Like out of energy, cloaking energy? Does RL have a natural gift? Does RL have perception? Does it have anything to do with time of day? Are fairies more likely to be seen as the sun begins to set? It just seems like there was some sort of failure, some sort of glitch, an unexpected problem that caused RL to be able to see the little charcoal man. And why doesn't he want us to see him? Why don't these fairies want us to see them? What would be so wrong if we saw them or interacted with them? What is the harm? Why are they trying to keep this boundary between us? Oh yeah, and RL said, to expanded perspectives, now she wrote this to expanded perspectives, not to me, okay? So listen to expanded perspectives for the full story. But she had also said that she felt like the little man was returning home from a visit or an errand or something. Maybe this little man was coming home for the night. He had a day out, now he was returning home. Do, 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 do. Maybe he went ahead and shed his cloaking magic or what, whatever it is, and then looked over and realized a human was looking at him. I don't know. But honestly, these accounts, oh, they fascinate me. That story excited me so much, but it leaves me with a lot more questions. There's a lot you can build onto this. And I'm not gonna talk about everything I discussed in this blog post, but I did wanna throw in one more point of interest here, and that is the fact that he morphed from a trash bag, the disguise of just being a piece of trash, to the guise of an animal, a black cat. Uh, first of all, black cats come with a lot of paranormal symbolism, but we also have this phenomenon of anomalous black cats that are seen in places where they should not be, like the UK, for example. But have you, it, I've seen animals in my life that are acting not normal, or like an animal that's like, why are you here, you know? So what if this is a popular disguise for the Fae, and that might be part of their lore? I don't know off the top of my head, see a lot. He could just go into a rabbit hole with this stuff. But the fact that he turns into an animal, it makes you wonder how many other animals out there you think you're seeing that are really something else in disguise. I mean, those are some, some serious shape-shifting skills. Shout out to my friend Ari who let me tell her story in the same blog post where she was driving one time and she saw a, it was sunrise, not sunset, but she saw a circle of dogs, all different kinds of dogs. They were just sitting in a circle facing each other. And then when they saw her, they like dispersed. They were like, oh shit, scatter. I couldn't help but draw some kind of parallel between the two. These animals that are not acting like animals, hmm? There could be something to that. I spent way too long talking about that one post. So let's go on to another post. Let's change gears a little bit. We just talked about fairies. Now let's talk about ghosts or hauntings. That's primarily what I write about, although I'm interested in anything under the paranormal umbrella, anything high strangeness, anything mysterious. I'm here for it. But I talk a lot about ghosts on my blog right now. So this blog post is she's in parties, ghost parties. I wanted to explore this phenomenon that I hear about a lot because I listen to a lot of people's stories because I don't have any of my own. So I'm just going to give this hypothetical example. Let's give this person a name. Seth. Seth, it lives in a, a house. He goes to go to sleep one night. He's laying in bed, getting ready for sleep. And he starts to hear a lot of commotion in the house. It sounds like people are in his kitchen. It sounds like a lot of people are in his kitchen. It actually sounds like a party. There's laughter and conversation and dishes clinking. 
And Seth thinks, has someone broken into my house and is throwing a party? It just sounded like a real celebration. This is all pretend story. So Seth is like, I have to go investigate. So he gets up, he goes down the hall to this dining kitchen area, and turns on the light, and there's nobody there. He heard the ghostly sounds of a dinner party. This is something I hear about. I don't want to say a lot, but more than you would think. So if you don't know, if you don't talk about this stuff or listen to this kind of stuff that often we have, the way we're understanding it, the way we have set it up is you have active, like sentient hauntings and then you have residual hauntings. So the sentient haunting is like, there's a ghost in your house. He's watching you. He's interacting with you. He's about you and he's thinking about you. And then we have residual hauntings where it's more like something happened in this house at one point and that something replays itself occasionally. It has nothing to do with you. It's not interacting with you. It's just playing out. I, first of all, I don't believe it's that simple, like residual versus sentient. I don't think it's necessarily that simple, but this dinner party phenomenon, I'm leaning towards this being a more residual type of thing. Sure, makes sense. There was a party in Seth's house at some point, maybe lots of parties, and that energy just kind of replays itself. But I have to think a little deeper here because usually when we are considering a residual haunting, it's something that a lot of times it's something bad that happened or something that would happen a lot. So, you know, Aunt Sally walked down the hall every single night when she was alive. Like that has been ingrained, like that has been carved in energetically. I can't say that a party leaves that same sort of imprint with repetition. You know what I'm saying? So typically residual hauntings you think of, they've left a mark via repetition or left a mark via tragedy and trauma. So how does a party fall into this? That's what I kind of wanted to unpack here. What makes a party leave a lasting imprint? A happy time. That's not usually what we attribute to any sort of haunting. So there are several ideas I had here. What if this party is celebrating a milestone of some kind, like a really, really monumental moment in someone's life? When you think about it, a lot of the negative events that result in a haunting, like a death, a death is a milestone in your life as well. Like everyone has their own special death waiting for them. The same way that everyone has like their own other special milestones, like a birthday or a promotion or a marriage, you know? So maybe it's the significance of the life event, the same way that death is a significant life event. I also think about theaters. Theaters are often, or many theaters are haunted. And you're like, why? It's not like people are dying there. It's not even like anything bad's happening there. And on the contrary, there's great stuff happening in a theater. And maybe that's the kind of energy and like the energy of enjoyment in a, a large volume and high concentration. So there are lots of people there enjoying themselves. Same with a party. Maybe it has to do with the amount of people gathering there and concentrating that happiness. Or maybe this is not a haunting, but it's more like a, I wouldn't call it a time slip, but it's like a time phenomenon, okay? A party happened in that very spot, let's say 50 years ago. I don't know if you've ever heard of the time is a layer cake analogy, but let's say we have past, present, and future are all a part of this cake. They're all happening at the same time and they're just stacked on top of each other. And sometimes here in the present, we we perceive something that's happening simultaneously in the same place, like a party. Does that make sense? I, I suck at explaining the layer cake thing, but it could be something as simple as that, a little slip in time, year, 
you're accidentally hearing something that's happening right there in the past that you aren't supposed to hear. Maybe that's not even a haunting. Maybe it's not even someone trying to show you something. It could not be about you. It could just be a fluke. You know what I'm saying? But that's all I'm going to say about the dinner party phenomenon. But I expanded more in my blog. Not that I'm trying to get you to go to the blog. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about these topics without going through the entire blog post because I've already been going for almost 20 minutes, which is a little much. So I only touched on two of my blog posts, which leaves a lot more for me in the future. If a paranormal theory rumination kind of video is fun for anyone, let me know. I don't know because I love talking about this stuff. I love talking about like the stuff that blows my mind. <laughs> we tried. Let's see how it turns out. Hope you have a great day. Watch out for trash bags and keep an ear out for